Hey folks, welcome back. We've got Pokemon Legends ZA coming out later this fall and Game Freak sure has been hyping us up by releasing a new Mega on almost a weekly basis. All this got me thinking, based on the Megas we already have, what Pokemon should get Megas next to fill in the gaps? We had a video a while back on what new grass type Mon needs to get introduced in Generation 10, and we can actually borrow that methodology to answer this question. The idea is pretty simple. Pretend Pokemon just have two stats for a second, attack and defense. We plot the stats for all the existing Megas, and I've chosen to exclude legendaries and mythicals here because looking at their stats versus those of non-legendary Megas, they would just skew things way too much. And we ask ourselves a really, really intuitive question. Where in this plot is the most logical place to introduce a new Megamon if we want it to be as different as possible from any of the existing ones? The answer just seems visually to be right around here since that's the gap in the attack defense graph with no representation right now. If you're curious about the math that powers this method, I'll leave a link to that part of the last video in the description below, but all we really need to know right now is that we've got some simple math that lets us hunt for these gaps. And that same method works just as well when we scale up to all six stats. What we find is that the stats for an ideal new Megamon look like this. 84 HP, 117 attack, 155 defense, 99 in both special attack and special defense, and 39 speed. We know that when a Mon Mega evolves, two things are guaranteed. Its HP stays the same, and its base stat total increases by 100. To avoid overly restricting ourselves on the exact stats recommended by our method, we'll limit our search based on target HP and target base stat total. So we're looking for a Mon with around 84 HP and a base stat total around 493. So now the question is, which generation most badly needs a new Mega? Not including the ones that were just confirmed to appear in ZA, and again excluding Legendaries and Mythicals, Gen 1 has 13 Megas, Gen 2 has 6, Gen 3 has a whopping 17. Gen 4 has 5, Gen 5 just has 1, and Gen 6 has no Mega. So we'll be theorizing 3 Megas here from those generations that need them the most. We'll start with one for Gen 6, one for Gen 5, and then finally one for Gen 4. To truly pick our new Megas to be as novel as possible, let's also avoid repeating any of the type combinations from existing Megas. It seems like Game Freak sort of has this idea themselves, because out of the 42 non-legendary, non-mythical Megas, there are 40 unique type combinations. So to recap, we are looking for a fully evolved Gen 6 Mon with a non-used Mega type combination, and with an HP around 84 plus or minus 5, and a base stat total around 493 plus or minus 20. And we get just 4 candidates. Pyroar, Malamar, Trevenant, and Slurpa. These are all super cool, but just off of vibes, I think Malamar is the coolest. A psychic dark mega super squid could be just really awesome. We know that its HP will stay at 86, and we have 100 points to allocate into the other stats. On a typical rest talk sweeper set with contrary, Mega Malamar would appreciate an even higher attack stat to take advantage of that added contrary boost. So we'll allocate 50 more points of attack. We'll also give it 30 more points of special defense for longevity, and the rest of the 20 points can go to its speed to help it outspeed about two thirds of all the fully evolved mons out there. Next up, what if we wanted to craft a new Mega for Gen 5 instead? Well, our method again gives us four options, Sawsbuck, Golurk, Excelgore, and Heatmore, and I think we just have to go with Golurk for this one from a cool factor. On a Stealth Rock set with two punching moves to take advantage of the Iron Fist ability, its attack is already its best trait, so we'll invest even more into that with 50 more points of attack. Golurk is really slow to the point where we don't want to invest too much more into its speed, and just let it outspeed things under potential trick rooms instead, so we'll just give it 10 extra points of speed. With 40 points left, we'll shore up both of its defenses equally, so it gets more turns to actually take advantage of that devastating 174 attack. Finally in Gen 4, we get a single Mon, Toxicroak, who I think would be really fun to get a Mega. I just couldn't see them not making the pouch on its chin super massive in a goofy way. On a Sword Stance set focusing on attack with priority Sucker Punch, it's no surprise that we would again want to boost that attack by investing half of our available points there. I promise I didn't plan to invest 50 extra points into each of these Mon's attack. We invest just 10 points into Special Defense for a bit more longevity, and the other 40 points will go to Speed to let it outspeed most things. If it wasn't obvious by now, I am not a competitive Pokemon player, so if any or all of what I recommended for these three mons seems off, please yell at me in the comments section below. But there you have it folks, the three mega evolutions that Game Freak needs to introduce soon, with six honorable mentions. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see all of you wonderful, wonderful people next time.